Hey guys, Cheryl here. Um, I've kind of updated how I do the epoxy application, so I thought I'd give you guys an up-to-date video. So this is uh, the most recent tumbler I've done. I did use two coats of triple thick clear coat and left the tape on both ends. This will be important so that you can brush up over the top of the tape so you get a nice even coat of epoxy. Uh, rubber gloves are a good idea. This stuff is pretty sticky, so you don't want it on your hands. This is the epoxy I buy. It is from Hobby Lobby. I recently found it on Amazon as well for about $12, so that's how I've been buying it recently. So it comes in two parts. You want to make sure that you use equal parts of each. I'm using these little cups as my measure cups and my mixing cups because I'm out of the little measuring cups it gives you. Um, I don't recommend just eyeballing it for the first couple times that you do this. Use the measuring cups provided. For one tumbler like this, I use about a tablespoon of each part. I've done enough of these, I can kind of eyeball it, but I would not recommend that. Make sure you put the lid back on because you will knock it over and spill it everywhere and it's a big mess. So get your other cup, kind of line it up if you're doing it this way, just to make sure that you get equal parts of both. One part of it is going to be a lot thicker and stickier than the other. Um, be extra careful with the sticky part, it takes forever to get off of anything. So I've got my two parts and now I'm going to mix them together. I usually pour the not as sticky thinner material into the thicker part um, just because it's easier to get out of the cup. So just set that aside. <clears throat> Make sure that you're protecting the surface you're working on. If this epoxy gets on your tabletop, it is hard to get off. So just mix it up really, really well. It'll look a little streaky at first as the two parts are coming together. What you want to do is mix it until it is completely mixed and you see no streaks. It'll look really bubbly. That's fine. The bubbles will work themselves out. Um, scrape the sides of your cup often and mix really, really well. If you don't, it'll still be tacky whenever it dries completely. So the first thing I'm going to do is put one really thin coat on. And the reason I do this, you'll see in a moment, is because I'm going to pour on a really thick layer. And this first thin layer just kind of helps the epoxy to glide over the surface naturally instead of hitting any rough spots that might be there from the glitter. And using a triple thick spray or something similar before that you start this process really, really does help, I found. I found that when I don't use the triple thick spray, I get a lot of dimples and it's just not a very good product overall. So this is just the first layer, very thin. I'm just kind of going over it quickly. The other thing, um, if you don't have a stand, just use anything. You can just prop it up on anything, but I do find that I get the best results when I leave it parallel to the ground like this instead of um, setting it up on its end. It's not really a big deal until you go to take the tape off. So now, that first coat is done, I am just going to start pouring the epoxy over the surface and then just very lightly kind of guide it so that it'll start to run down the sides. 
I'm not using a lot of pressure here. I'm just very gently letting it glide over the edge. It will run, it will drip, that's perfectly fine. That's why you have something underneath to catch those drips. There's no drying time in between that first thin coat and the thick coat. Just do it immediately. If you let a thin coat dry on there, you'll get dimples and weird spots that are gonna be impossible to even out. Um, use more than you think you even need. I use the whole, whole amount that I do, not a big deal. The excess will run off and it's fine. So you'll see that it's starting to run down the edge. You can see it running. You just kind of very, very, very gently let it run over. You can smooth it out just by very gently running the sponge over the surface. And I'm not applying any pressure. As you can see, I'm just kind of very gently guiding the sponge over the surface. And I just do this a few times. I just keep turning it over, keep smoothing it out just for this first couple minutes. So this is after just a few minutes. You can see that a few drips have started to form. And that's fine, just keep smoothing it out. Baby wipes are actually my favorite thing to use on these because it just takes some of the extra epoxy off. So this is after about half an hour. I'm going to take the tape off. I don't do it right away because that epoxy is still really flowing over the surface and I don't want any drips to get on my arm or on the stainless steel part. You'll get a few drips anyway, which is fine. You can just wipe them off, but it's nice to be able to eliminate some of that. You can see I'm, I used electrical tape on this one. Um, I found that electrical tape works just as well as painter's tape. It's a little harder to get off of the cups but it does provide a nice clean line, just like painter's tape, so it's really up to you which, which you wanna use. So when you get this off, um, you'll notice that you're gonna have a few areas where the epoxy has run down onto the stainless steel portion of the cup. You can see on the bottom there. So I just take a baby wipe and I just clean that extra epoxy off. If you do it right away when it's still tacky, it will clean off pretty easily. And baby wipes, for some reason, seem to do the job. So it's nice and clean. So I'm going to take some strips of the baby wipes and set them on the stand. The reason is some epoxy gets on the area where there's tape, which then gets on my stand. So if I just cover those areas with a baby wipe, it kind of eliminates a lot of the epoxy from getting onto the cup once I take that tape off. So the tape is removed, you can see it's a nice clean line. And I just gently set it back down. You can see there's a little area on there where there's epoxy, just clean that off with a baby wipe. And now you can see that drips have started to form along that bottom edge. That's what you want, that's good. If you don't see a drip line forming, you don't have enough epoxy on, and it's going to be dumbly and weird. So just very gently pick it up, and you can see that drip line on the bottom edge. You want to put that on the very top and it'll smooth itself out. You don't even have to touch it. It'll fall down the edges. The more you mess with it at this point, the worse off you're going to be because it's going to start to get tacky. So just keep rotating it. The drips self level themselves out. As long as you don't allow them to sit for a long period of time, you'll be fine. One thing to make sure that you're doing when you're doing this epoxy is um, wear a respirator and don't use this around kids. You want to use it in a fresh air situation. I have a fan running, windows on. Um, just please be safe. This does emit fumes. You can't really smell them, but they are there. Keep baby wipes on hand just to clean off little drips here and there. It makes a huge difference.
if you guys have any questions or if you need help troubleshooting, just leave me a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Again, this process takes a while. You're going to have some trial and error, but the results are just awesome whenever you get it all done. And this is food safe. If you're going to be selling these, I highly recommend using this food safe epoxy. Thanks for watching. And yeah, if you have any questions, just leave them below. Thanks.